I want to show you a clip of Dan Crenshaw, congressman from Houston, and my favorite, Jordan Peterson, discussing the woke right. And I'm going to come back to discuss. The clip is eight minutes long. Stay tuned all the way through. I'm going to give you my thoughts afterwards. And so this is from these, these, these mostly disenchanted young men, frankly, that are, are so incensed by the idea that you might be supportive of me because they're, they're mad at me for some reason. They're not even sure why. It's actually one of the more hilarious things about my fight with this group of kind of populist types is that if you actually ask them questions about it, they usually are, are deriving their hatred from some kind of conspiracy. Like I, like I worked mm -hmm. for the World Economic Forum or I voted for red flag laws, which again, isn't true, I voted the opposite. Uh, I'm not part of the World Economic Forum, obviously. Uh, they, they, they always default to these very strange conspiracies. What, what they, if they were telling the truth, what they would say is that Dan calls us out. Dan calls us out and we don't like that because fundamentally, we're, we're more mafioso than we are 1776. And fundamentally, it's about loyalty. And you know what? If we want to move the goalposts a little bit and test your loyalty by seeing if you'll say the next thing that is, that is more extreme and more, and, and more provocative, then we'll test your loyalty. And if you, don't, if you don't concede, well, you're no longer with us. And worse, if you criticize us for it, well, we'll do everything we can to destroy you because you've got too much influence and we don't like that. So that, that's, what's, that's what's fundamentally behind that kind of mobbing on the radical right. It's, it's like a, it's a loyalty test more than anything else. And what's frustrating about it is it's very little separating us policy-wise. Again, I think, I think the foreign policy is probably the key thing. But other than that, it's, it's, it's difficult to find actual differences. Well, you, you, told me, you told me that you've actually faced, this isn't the case for me. I've faced way more trouble from the radicals on the left than the radicals on the right. I've had my trouble with the radicals on the right. But, you know, there's no radicals on the right causing trouble in the universities, like zero. And so because mostly I was in the universities, all the enmity that was devoted towards me and everything that's undermined my profession and my ability to conduct my business has come from the radical left. But the radical right has come after me now and then. But you told me that, at least, especially in more recent years, you've actually had more trouble from the radical right than from the radical left. Well, I don't know if it's more. Uh, it's not like I'm. I'm not, it's not like okay. I'm popular with the left. You know, and part of it's like it's primary season, and this is just what happens. But I did tap into. I, I tapped a nerve with some of these people. And a, and a very because they're threatened. They're threatened that 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 what I want, which is the Reagan revolution of conservatism, um, is is going to displace what they want. Which is, I mean, it's hard to say who their hero is. Again, I don't actually even think it's Trump. Well, I think I think their hero is probably something like a warrior type. You know, like at least in imagination. And well, they I think say you that, fit but that they, archetype. But they, I know, I know, I know. I know, but that but they seem to really hate any veterans who because veterans t tend to have a sense of loyalty to institutions and they hate that. Um, and they they it's 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 a strange thing. Whatever the right wing populists are, I call, actually call them the woke right. They're woke uh -huh. because there's they they share so many similarities with the left, and I and I went over some of them, but you know some of those similarities again are are an, an, an untethering from long standing principles. Again, it's about winning in the moment. It's about that hyper loyalty. It's contrarianism for the sake of being a contrarian. Okay, so that might be part of it, eh? That might be part of it then, because if, if the moral virtue is to be derived from merely being contrary right to the point of conspiratorial thinking, and then they run across someone like you who is capable of being contrary, but who isn't conspiratorial or contrary in an arbitrary sense, and then you say, well, here's the limits to being contrary. Well, then that's annoying because what that means is that you make a better moral case for your stalwart reasonableness than they can make for their arbitrary contrariness. And that arbitrary contrariness, that's just a kind of, out, that's the kind of outrage that you already described. It's, Look how virtuous I am because I'm so upset about this. I'm so upset I want to tear everything down. Well, how come you're... How are you different than a radical Marxist then? Because they want the same bloody thing and for the same moral reasons. And I'm unconvinced that the, many of the people that are the loudest on this, um, they usually have a, when I say the people, who am I talking about? I, I'm talking about mostly, like there are some politicians that fit this bill, but mostly I'm talking about influencers who run Instagram accounts or run, run Twitter accounts. Maybe they're, 
maybe they write for some sort of fringy online website, whatever it is. Uh, maybe they're a Fox News host uh, named Tucker Carlson. In, in, in any case, their their goal their you know, their goal is contrarianism for the sake of it, and and the word outsider means everything to them. And so they create this incentive structure because they 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 know that that the people respond to words like outsider for for some of the reasons mm-hmm. that we're mm-hmm. we're talking about, right? Because like everybody who wants to go to Washington just talks about how corrupt Washington is, and so yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. And, well, and so people have that's... this belief that it's terrible, and then you know it's this like self fulfilling prophecy. It's it's a pretty bad situation that we're in, and we've, we've we've cast a lot of doubt on the integrity of the institution there by by nature of this by you know election process um, and mm-hmm. how we talk about it. But I don't think that these people really believe a lot of the words that they're saying. I believe that they're engaging in the incentive structure just to be contrarians because there, there is an incentive structure there. It's good for their business. Well, sometimes, Dan, sometimes being a rebel is the most, is the most honorable thing you can do, but almost never. But sometimes it is because you're standing up against the mob, you know, and you said as part of the SEAL code, or at least associated with it, is that you can be a rebel but not a mutineer. It's like, so you're a rebel when you really need to be. And the thing is, if you're a rebel when you really need to be, and I think you are exactly that, then that casts a dim light on those who are just rebels all the time and who are bringing to themselves the moral virtue that's attendant on the stance of the rebel, right? Because that has to be done judiciously, like exceptionally judiciously. Because most of the time, if if you believe something that everyone doesn't believe, you're wrong. Most of the time. Sometimes everyone is wrong. But boy, that better not be the case very often. And if it is the case, and you're the one who's opposing that, that's not a place you want to be, even though that's a place you need to be. And there is virtue in that. But so, I, well, I think the reason you're so annoying to these people is because, as far as I can tell, I hate to compliment people, because it's, it's worse than an insult in some sense, but I do, I do always get the sense talking to you that you're the real thing, you know? You've been fire hardened in a very interesting way. And so these rebel types who view themselves as saviors of the institutions or of, of the democracy, they'd like to have you in their camp, but they don't because you're not that guy. And I think that's very galling because it also casts them in an extremely dim light. And they feel betrayed. And one of the worst human emotions you can feel is betrayal, yeah, right? Yeah, because yeah. They, they had this ideal that you were just going to, you were going to be that 100% of the time rebel. It's a good way to put it. Yeah. And, and when I say, well, no, I mean, I, I use deductive reasoning. I analyze the situation in front of me and I say, look, this is, this is worth your time fighting. And this isn't as true as you think. Mm-hmm. And telling somebody who holds a very strong belief about a given issue that it isn't as true as they think, or that the situation that they're angry about isn't as true as they think. I, I get this a lot about you know, World Economic Forum. I mean, it's a terrible institution. But I ask people, like, is, is it worth 100% of your time? Is, is the conspiratorialness about me associated with this really worth your time? What effect does this thing have on you? And but you know, once people get wrapped up into it, they get wrapped up into it. I don't understand why anybody can't truly appreciate Dan Crenshaw. And it's exactly what he talks about, the purity on both sides of the equation, when you hit the extremes of the political spectrum, this is what they demand. Dan Crenshaw served this country in Afghanistan and Iraq, and he gave his eye, almost died. He wants what is best for America. And when he talks about the purity spiral, it exists on both factions. And I've seen it with the people that are criticizing Dan Crenshaw, and he states that he did not vote uh, for the red flag laws, and he's not the rumors that exist that he's with the World Economic Forum, probably disinformation put out by the left to besmirch him on the right. So my point here is let's avoid the extremes and concentrate and focus on what works for ourselves, for society, for our families, not to spiral out of control into, as he says, once again, the purity spiral that takes us all down into the whirlpool, to the bottom of the ocean, if we adhere to it as a nation altogether. Not the left, not the right.
come to what works. The left is way over here. Their purity spiraling out of control. This is a chance for people who make sense to make solid gains in the political sphere. And let's not blow that by going over there and letting them point to commit to violence that is committed on the right-hand side of the aisle. Let's stay peaceful. Let's drill them for all their shortcomings, whether it be on the border, whether it be on crime, whether it be on leaving Afghanistan as we did as a nation. But this was all done as a result of the woke purity spiral that exists on the left. Now it's time that we follow the lead of Dan Crenshaw and other people that make sense. And it's not rhino, it's not Republican in name only, it's what works.